lift your name on high Lord, I love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth Lord, I lift your name on high. You know, that's the reason that we come together to worship the Lord here at Harlandale Christian Church, to lift his name, his loving, powerful, mighty name on high and keep it in the forefront in our hearts. We're glad that you're joining with us here at Harlandale to worship our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with us as we fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Praise to our God. We lift his holy name. The psalmist says in Psalm 146, the first five verses, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your, your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save, for when their, soul, when their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. But blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God. We place our trust, our hope, and our God in heaven, and we lift up his name on high today. Let's pray together as we begin our worship time. Father, we thank you for your power, your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for calling us together as your children here to worship you here at Harlandale Christian Church. And we thank you for your presence here among us through your Holy Spirit. Father, we lift your name on high. We lift the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, on high. And we thank you for the love that sent your only begotten Son to the cross of Calvary to redeem us from our sins. Receive our worship, our praise, our adoration as we lift up your holy name and as we seek to draw nearer to you as we honor you and praise you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
to deliver Let us all thy life receive Suddenly return and never, never
our price Drawn to redemption by the grace in His eyes If grace is an ocean we're all sinking and Heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss My heart turns violently inside of my chest What it will be like When I walk By your side I can only imagine What my eyes will see When your face Is before me I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine When the day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I will do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you be still? Will I stand? To my knees will I fall Will I sing hallelujah Will I be able to speak at all I can only imagine I can only imagine
I can only imagine As we come to the time in our worship service where we set aside a few moments to partake of the Lord's Supper, this communion time as we uh, break the unleavened bread that represents the, the body, the flesh of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he went to the cross of Calvary. We partake of the cup, the fruit of the vine that reminds us of the, the blood that Jesus shed on that cross of Calvary to pay the price for our forgiveness, our remission from our sins, for our salvation. Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, became the sacrificial Lamb of God right at the time of the Passover when the Jews would celebrate the Passover feast, the Passover time from of old when God passed over their houses because they had placed the blood of the Lamb on their door frames. Jesus is our sacrificial Lamb and God through His blood, the blood that He shed on the cross of Calvary forgives our sins when we accept Him as our Lord and our Savior. The Hebrew writer reminds us that there is Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And we thank God for that forgiveness of sins and salvation. And our hymn of communion today is, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Let's remember that without the shedding of Jesus' blood, we have no forgiveness of sins. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love. Your love that, that, that caused you to plan and provide your only begotten Son as the sacrificial Lamb of God to be the final Passover Lamb so that through the shedding of his blood on the cross of Calvary, when we accept him as our Lord, as our Savior, you provide us your grace, your mercy, and the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for loving us, Father. Thank you for the reminder that we partake of uh, each Lord's Day as we come to this communion table to remind us of your love, the price that was paid, and the hope that is ours because of that salvation that we, might, that we will spend eternity with you in heaven. Thank you, Father, for that fountain filled with the blood of your Son, Jesus, that washes us clean. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Show my 
sins away And then may I know while I see Wash all my sins away Precious blood shall never lose its power Till all the ransoms church of God Be safe to sin no more Be safe to sin no more Be safe to sin no more I saw the stream Your flowing wounds supply Redeeming love has been my theme And shall be till I die And shall be till I die And shall be till As we begin this month of November, I would suppose, I would guess that many of us are starting to think about the holiday, the, the special day toward the end of the month that we call Thanksgiving, that we hopefully will spend time counting our blessings and thinking of how, how blessed we really are to have life and have God and His Son, Jesus Christ, in our lives. Yet I think that we need to spend more time than just one day thinking and thanking our God for, uh, for the blessings that He's given to us. And so for this month of November, we'll consider our sermon themes, our message theme as counting every blessing. Hopefully turning our thoughts and our, our minds to God's presence in our, our lives every single day. But you know, in our lives, we've gotten so busy that so much of what we do is possibly driven by the idea of earning and getting, earning a paycheck getting a, a pension, earning recognition, maybe even earning affection. But the reality of salvation, God's gift of his grace and his mercy, salvation, the greatest gift that we could ever receive is that it is not something that we can earn. Because we could never be good enough or work hard enough to deserve God's grace, His mercy, and the salvation that He provides through to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. And so the beautiful and humbling truth for us today is that salvation is a free gift given out of God's abundant grace and love. And it's not based on our merit. It's only based on God's mercy. So again, today as we start our series, Counting Every Blessings, 
we, we, we begin by reflecting on this greatest blessing of all, the blessing of salvation. And this salvation is not just about securing a place in heaven for us. It's about being transformed right here, right now. It's about becoming a new creation in Christ. So as we dive into this message today, let's keep that in mind. Salvation is more than just our future hope. It's our present reality when we are a child of God. Let's begin with what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 9, in his letter to the church in Ephesus. This is a passage that, in which Paul makes it crystal clear that we are saved by grace, not by anything that we could do or achieve or work. In Ephesians 2, beginning with verse 4, the Apostle Paul says, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one could boast. Paul teaches us, I think, three clear lessons in this passage, and beginning with this passage today. The first lesson is that he emphasizes to the church in Ephesus and through the Spirit of God to us as we receive this word, we are saved by grace, not by our works. Ephesians chapter 2 paints this powerful picture of our, uh, of our condition before we receive the salvation through Jesus Christ and through, from God's mercy and grace. Paul says very clearly, we were dead in our sins. He doesn't say we were lost or misguided. He says we were dead. And think about this. Dead people can't bring themselves back to life. There's nothing that we could have done to save ourselves. No good deed, no religious act that could change our situation. Yet Paul writes, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Friends, it's this grace, this unmerited favor of God that saves us. Not our works, not our efforts, Nothing we could do would ever be enough to earn God's salvation, God's grace and mercy. But that's just the point. The salvation that we receive from God through His Son, Jesus Christ, is a gift. A gift. Think about it this way, if you will. If someone came to you and wiped away all of your debt, whether it's your financial debt, or your emotional or spiritual debt, how would you respond to them? Would you uh, try to stop them? Would you try to pay them back? You couldn't. And that's exactly how it is with God's grace. It's a gift that we cannot repay. And thank God, we're not asked to. Instead of trying to earn our way into God's favor and trying to work our way into heaven, we're invited to live in the freedom that God's grace brings us. That's our response. Or as the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, that's our reasonable act of worship. Think about it. What would it look like if you stopped striving for God's acceptance, 
What if you already have it? Friends, embrace the fact that God loves you, not because of what you've done, but because of who He is and what He's already done on your behalf in the gift of His only begotten Son. Our second lesson, salvation is a new beginning. Salvation is a new beginning. Paul, writing to Titus in Titus chapter 3, gives us another powerful reminder of what salvation means for us. Because Paul says, At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. In Titus 3, verses 3 through 5. He saved us, not because of righteous things or good deeds that we had done, but because of his mercy. Friends, this passage doesn't just tell us what we're saved from. It tells us what we're saved for. Salvation is not just about being forgiven from our sins. It's about being made new. It's about a transformation. The old self with its sinful desires and the misguided pursuits, that's gone. Through the Holy Spirit, God renews us. He makes us new. We are reborn and that new birth marks the, the beginning of a new life. A life that reflects the character of Christ, Jesus, the Son of the living God. I want you to picture a caterpillar with me this morning. It spends its early life crawling along the ground, eating leaves, but when it enters the chrysalis, there's a miraculous transformation that takes place. And so when, when it comes out of that uh, chrysalis, that cocoon, it's no longer a caterpillar. You know what it is? It's a butterfly. It flies, it soars, and its entire nature has been changed. Now friends, that's what salvation does for us. We're no longer the same people that we were before we encountered Christ, before we accepted Him as our Lord and our Savior. And uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, we are new creations in Him. So ask yourself today, am I living like someone who's been made new? Are there parts of your life that still feel like you're, you're crawling when you should be soaring? Friends, salvation is more than just a future promise, a future in heaven. It's a present reality. It's a changed life today. Allow God to continue His transforming work in you each and every day. Seek Him on the, the good days and on the bad days, knowing that God is with you through it all. To the very end. Jesus even promised that in the great commission to his disciples. That I believe is a great commission to each one of us as Christians. I will be with you. I will be with you to the end. The third lesson. God's salvation through Jesus Christ is available to all. To everyone. Going back to Ephesians, the second chapter, and especially verses 8 and 9, Paul reminds us that this grace, this salvation is available to all. He says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by, not by works, so that no one can boast. Now, friends, this is an important statement. Salvation is not something that's reserved for just a select few. God's grace is available to anyone who believes 
and accepts Jesus Christ as Savior. No one is excluded based on their background, their past, or their failures. Because when you accept Jesus Christ as Savior, when you're buried with Him in baptism, you rise to walk in newness of life. The old man is put to death. The new life, the new person rises to walk in Christ. The gospel message is inclusive. It welcomes the sinner, the broken, the lost. And the gospel message, the, 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 the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is an open invitation for anyone who will receive it and respond to it. Let your mind's eye once again follow along with me. Imagine a great banquet with a table full of food and the doors are flung wide open. And everyone is invited to come, and, come in and sit down regardless of their social status or, or what they've done. That's the image of God's salvation. There's a seat at the table for everyone. Everyone who accepts the grace of God through his son, Jesus Christ. And just like the invitation to that banquet, God's offer of salvation is freely given. This is the same picture, the same image that comes from Matthew chapter 22, when Jesus gives the parable of the wedding banquet. Friends, as followers of Jesus Christ, we must never forget that we are also messengers of this invitation. Today, think about it. Who in your life needs to hear this message of grace? Who needs to know that God's love is available to them? Maybe there's somebody that you've written off or, or someone who feels unworthy of God's love. Let's pray and commit to sharing this blessing of salvation with those around us just as freely as God offers it to you and to me. Freely given, we freely give the invitation away. So friends, as we reflect on the, the blessing of salvation from this first week of November, we can see three truths emerge for us. First, we're saved by grace not by our works. There is absolutely nothing we can do that would earn God's favor. It's already given to us through Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. Second, salvation transforms us here and now. We are made new, we're reborn through the Holy Spirit, and we're called to live as new creations in Jesus Christ. And third, God's salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ, is available to all. God's grace knows no boundaries, and we're invited to share that good news with the world around us. This week, I want to leave you with a few practical steps to live out this blessing of salvation. Think about these. Jot them down, if you will, but put them into practice, please. The first of these, embrace grace. Take time every day this week to remind yourself that you don't need to earn God's favor. When you feel the temptation to measure your worth by your actions, remember when you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, God's grace is already yours. The second Live as a new creation. Reflect on the areas of your life where you need to experience that transformation that we've talked about. Ask God to help you to live in the freedom and renewal that His salvation brings to you. And thirdly, share the gift of salvation. Look for those opportunities around you to, to share the message of grace with someone this week. Whether it's through a, a, a conversation, a kind gesture, or maybe even just a simple invitation to come to church. Let others know that they too 
are invited to experience this blessing of salvation. What a joy it is to know this blessing, this gift of God. Salvation, forgiveness, redemption from, the, from our sins. If you are hearing this today, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you want to know more about this joy, about this blessing, then we invite you when we sing this hymn of decision, Jesus paid it all to turn your heart, your life, your whole being over to the one who gave his life for you. If you're already a, a Christian, you've confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you've been buried with Him in baptism for the remission of sins, but you're looking for a church home to unite your service, your life with for the glory of God, we invite you to come. We invite you to join with us here in Harlandale. But if you just need to rebuild, refresh, to open your heart and your life to the Holy Spirit of God, to renew this relationship with, with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And you want, to pray, you want prayer. You want, you want us to pray with you, to encourage you. And we invite you to come. Come forward to, and we'll pray together. For those who are war worshiping with us online, if you're interested to learn more about this salvation, about offering uh, us offering our prayers for you, about uniting your life, your fellowship with us here at Harlandale, we invite you to contact, contact us at the end of this uh, service there's a, a slide that has our contact information and we invite you to, to get in touch with us so that we, we can have the conversation. We can pray together and we can study God's word together. But the point of this is God's grace is a blessing. His salvation is free because Jesus, his only begotten son, paid the price. Will you open your heart and your life to him as we sing this song? Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for th this opportunity, especially this month of uh, Thanksgiving and of November when our thoughts turn to uh, thanks for the many blessings that we have. We thank you for your watch and your care over us every day of our lives. But most of all, Father, today, we thank you for the gift of salvation, the blessing of salvation. We know from your word that we could never earn the forgiveness of our sins and your salvation on our own. Thank you for your only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ. Help us to live in him Help us to live in gratitude, thankfulness for your mercy and your grace. Help us to be transformed by the love that you've shown to us through your son, Jesus Christ. And help us to hear your word through your spirit living in us and guiding us. Thank you for the price that your son, Jesus Christ, paid for my salvation, for the salvation of all the world for those who've come to him and accepted him as Lord and Savior. Thank you for your salvation. We praise you. We lean upon you. We come to you now. In Jesus' name, amen.